the cults. And I've decided this evening to start winding this down. There is a lot of perhaps what you might call lesser cults that are in this world today, but are active. And I thought we'd just go through a number of them tonight to kind of uh, finish up here gradually with this study. First of all, turn to 1 Timothy chapter number 4. And let's remember what God says in his word here. 1 Timothy chapter number 4. Verse number 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times, where we are, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Well, really, some of these cults are right there. The things that are behind them are nothing as far as God's concerned, but it certainly is the devil behind them. Blinding people, leading them astray into the most foolishness of some of the... When you hear some of these tonight, it's just unbelievable that people are taken in by them. But uh, they are, and this is the reason. They give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And remember our job. Go to the book of 2 John. 2 John, and notice what it says here in verses 9 through 11. Whosoever transgresseth and bideth not in the doctrine of Christ. Remember that all these cults we have been dealing with are wrong about Jesus Christ. Most of them do not believe that he is God manifest in the flesh. They believe he was a man in the case of Mormons who became God, just like we're going to become gods in the future if you're a good Mormon, or that he's just merely a man as Jehovah's Witness teach and so on. So they're all off on the doctrine of Christ. And of course, what they're doing is transgressing. Go on. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not the doctrine of Christ hath not God. So don't claim to know God if you don't believe what's right about Jesus Christ. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house. Neither bid him God's speed, for he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. So there's quite a warning. We run across these people in cults that do not teach what the Bible plainly says. We're not to have any kind of fellowship with them. We absolutely have got to say they're wrong. And we can't even bid them Godspeed and say, God bless you. God shouldn't bless them. God needs to get their attention and wake them up. Now, of course, we don't uh, be mean to them or angry they are blinded. They are blinded by Satan and need the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we certainly do not give them a hearing in our church or have any type of thing to do with them as far as fellowship because they're just wrong. Well, let's get into some of these tonight that we want to look at, several that I will mention to you this evening, the big cults we've covered, uh, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Christian Science, and uh, some of these bigger ones we've covered. Now we come to some smaller ones, but they're out there in our country, and we need just to be aware of them. First one mentioned up here is the Way International. Anybody ever heard of them? They're a little stronger about 20, 30 years ago than they are now. But they had about 10 years ago 100,000 followers. I don't know how many they have now. Founded by a man named Victor Paul Weirville. He resigned his Church of Christ pulpit to start this new group at New Knoxville, Ohio. His whole aim was to teach the word as it's not been taught since the first century. Kind of interesting. So he's the one to revive what's not been here for 2,000 years. 85% of all Christian teaching is not Christian, he says. The new leader believes in new thinking. But here's some of his statements. Jesus Christ is not God. What's that do to you right there? Second John. 
Anyone transgresseth and doesn't have the right doctrine about Jesus Christ does not have God. That's what it says. This fellow is dead wrong. He says there is not a trinity. They said Jesus was never incarnate. In other words, come into this world in the flesh. He just began as a normal uh, being. He did not arise from the dead. Only people after Pentecost can possibly be saved. Everybody before Pentecost perished. That means all Old Testament saints and everybody else is gone and perished. Can you believe all this? No water baptism in their churches. They absolutely say that uh, the evidence that you are with them is to speak in tongues. So they're somewhat charismatic. But if you're really with them, you've got to be able to do this. This is kind of interesting. They have a 147-acre complex at New Knoxville, Ohio. They have a Bible college. I scratched my head when I read that. What in the world did they teach them when they have such strange beliefs? Bible College in Emporia, Kansas. They have a 105-acre ranch that they run in Gunnison, Colorado. So they have some big holding places for their people. The founder said, people need abundant living. So when you become a part of their group, you go through a 36-hour training session so that you'll know how to have this abundant life. But his abundant life includes this, extreme Calvinistic ideas. Once you're saved, nothing you can do bothers your salvation. So he says, live it up, smoke. Drink, have drugs, have as many wives as you want. I mean, that's what he says. Once you're saved, do what you want. Does that sound like the Bible? Well, I don't know. I've never run into anybody in this cult, the Way International, but I understand they're about 100,000 strong in the United States, and maybe sometime you'll be in Imperial, Kansas, and see their Bible college or New Knoxville, Ohio, and see their main headquarters? I don't know, but I thought I'd point them out to you. Second one, how many is familiar with astrology? Uh, heard of the horoscope? Used to be they had those in the newspaper. I don't know if they still, are. They still have it in there. A lot of people follow that, you know. They believe that human lives are influenced and in some cases even predetermined by the position of certain heavenly bodies, particularly the stars. So that's what they believe. Your life is written in the stars. Other human events are affected by the positions of planets and stars. Important decisions and momentous occasions should be considered with respect to the horoscope. So you know if the horoscope doesn't line up right for you, don't make a major decision. If it does, jump into it right then and there. Uh, just follow that is what a lot of people do. Now this is nothing new. This particular astrology has been around since ancient Babylon. And the Lord in the Bible warns us about that. Take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 18. Notice what God says about these type of people. In verse number 9, When thou art come to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations. Notice that word, abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all these that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. So this is bad stuff. Don't get involved in it. Look at what Jeremiah 10.2 has to say. Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse number 2. <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord, learn not. Isn't that clear enough? 
Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of the heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Does that sound like astrology? <laughs> it says, do not, learn not the way of them, and be involved with signs of the heavens. That's not the way God speaks to us through the heavens. Now, the heavens declare the glory of God, don't they? The psalm says that. You certainly ought to be able to look at the heavens and see there's a God. You ought to be able to look at the heavens and see the tremendous constellations and things that God's put up there for us to look at in the night sky. But they do not have anything to do with your spiritual life. Your spiritual life is totally guided and directed by God's word and God's spirit when you're a Christian. So that's what we need to remember. Definitely we reject astro astrology as another one of these cults. Next we come up here to Baha'ism. Anybody familiar with them? They do have a church on East Green Street, just off of Cottage Grove. Just go down there a little ways, you'll see their church building here in town. Their founder was Baha Yulala. In 1863, he proclaimed he was a manifestation of God. So in other words, he came on the scene, look at me, I'm showing you God. That's what he claimed. He has a bunch of writings, and those particular writings are things that have to do with this. Oneness of humanity, oneness of religion, oneness of God. So in other words, everybody should get together. We all want to be one. There should not be this religion's right or that religion's right. There's good in all of them. So they all need to come together and have dialogues and worship together. And if you want to worship uh, Allah one Sunday and worship uh, some Hindu gods the next Sunday, all that's just fine. Baha'ism is accepting of all these things. What they want to do is eventually bring about world peace and the elimination of religious divisions in the world. All religions have merit. Essentially, all of them should unite, and we'd all have a better life here and in the next. They deny the deity of Jesus Christ. What's that tell you? They're a cult. They have absolutely uh, no regard for the inspiration of the Bible, the Bible is no more important than any other religious reading, writing. Of course, uh, no need to be saved or anything. Everybody just believes whatever you want to believe and everything's okay as you do that. So a very strange thing. They have 17,000 churches in the United States now. Why would you think something like that would appeal to people? What do you think that appeals to people? Why would people go and be involved in Baha'ism? Well, it's simply the fact what has been preached for the past 40 years. God loves us all. There's no hell. There's no judgment. God wouldn't judge anybody. Everybody God accepts and so love is the key thing. Let's all get together, love one another. It doesn't matter what you believe, God loves you. I mean, that's where they're at. And it's a product of all that's going on and being preached in our world today. So basically, uh, you might run into somebody. I have. I have run into a couple people that are involved in this group in town here through the years. And so talking to them is very interesting. They usually smile real big and say, I know what you're trying to say, but you know, there's all these other people that are good too. And there's good in all religions, and you shouldn't be so condemnatory. Again, you know, the basis is, uh, well, what's the basis of your belief? This is what men have come up with. It's not what God says in his word. God absolutely makes things pretty distinct, doesn't he? And you know what? The Bible, compared to all other religious readings, is true. Historically, archaeologically, absolutely in every way, the Bible's true. Prophecies of the Bible come to pass, have come to pass by the thousands from the Old Testament 
dealing with, of course, the future of Israel in the Old Testament, dealing with what would happen when Christ comes into the world and about Jesus Christ and future things. I mean, it's all there. And so uh, uh, the Bible's got the answer, but they can't see it that way. Another blindness of Satan. Let's go to the next one up here. Hare Krishna. You ever heard of that one? There might be a few of you that have. Actually, their whole name is the International Society of Krishna. And it's an Indian-based mystical cult. I mean, from India, the country of India. An Indian-based mystical cult. The founder, I'm going to try to pronounce this guy's name. You might get a laugh out of this. A.C. Blacktaristanama Swani Prabhablupapa. Probably didn't pronounce it right, but I did the best I could. He's their founder way back in the early 1900s. He was born in 1896, died in 1977, lived a pretty long life, but he was their leader. He wrote a number of sacred Hindu texts that people go by and others that have been written years before him to cleanse followers of false concepts in this material world and bring about the freeing of the spiritual body from the physical body. Really and truly, you are really living when you're freed from your physical body. Interesting. Isn't that something? Another one of these crazy ones. They believe in all types of exotic experiences. For instance... Some of their particular people might just believe the best way for me to get right with God is lay on a bed of nails for a week. And they sleep on a bed of nails. Very disciplined lifestyles they believe in. Absolutely purge yourself from all types of pleasures for a specific time. You make the time and then you don't have any type of pleasures whatsoever. You just meditate and think spiritual thoughts and how important the spiritual is over the material things. And uh, a lot of stuff like that they believe in. They're built upon mythological scriptures and events. Uh, there's, of course, do not believe Jesus Christ is God. They uh, believe there's no such thing as sin to be saved from. There's no savior needed. Much of the things they do when they meet together is have vain repetitions. Remember Jesus talks about that? A lot of different chants, a lot of different certain things they say over and over and over again. Uh, that's a lot what they do in their particular meetings. Now I've never met one of them in town that I recall either in this particular group. Let's go to the next one. Scientology, have you heard of them? As a matter of fact, uh, John Wood was telling me today when I was talking with him that uh, there was some series on television about this particular group. And so they're quite out there in the public eye and uh, have some very famous people, actors, that are a part of this group. The founder is Ron Hubbard in Washington, D.C. back in 1955. Supposedly, they're a combination of science and religion. And one of the key things that they want to do is to counsel you. But their counseling sessions, as of a few years ago, range from $2,000 to $30,000. Anybody want to line up for one of those tonight? Unbelievable. Hubbard taught this. Mankind is descended from a race of uncreated, omnipotent gods called Thetans. These gods gave up their powers to enter the material energy space, gave up their powers out in, in the spiritual world to enter the material space time world of the earth. Here they evolved by reincarnation to become humans. They don't remember their deified state. So as humans, you've got to get back to your deified state. So what they say is, you need to overcome your mental blocks and awaken to your deified self once again. That's your goal in this Scientology. Over time, 
You will learn to have power and control over the material things in your life and will become totally spiritual. It's another mind over matter business. You ever notice how many of these are that? I mean, everything's got to be in your mind and, and the material world doesn't matter. And, uh, you know, some people even say it's not even there. Uh, it's ridiculous thinking. But believe it or not, they have about a million followers in the United States and 400, four, excuse me, not four, four million sympathizers with their group. That's what I read. Something really interesting there. Um, definitely not Christian at all, but uh, people get involved in this thing and uh, think this is their spiritual life and their spiritual hope to get involved in finding their deified self so they can get back there again. So, uh, interesting teaching. John was saying, though, uh, say a few things that you saw on that program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. Now, I've never run into one of them either. Anybody run into one of these people in this church? I don't even know if there's a group in this town, but there may be, LaVon. Well, another cult, and uh, sad to see people are taken up with it. Well, transcendental meditation, anybody familiar with that? Again, a mind over matter type thing. You need to meditate so you can overcome all your problems and difficulties. I, I always remember this. A lady, when I first came to this church about uh, two or three years after I arrived, a lady came out here and sat in this end of our property, just sat on the ground with her arms crossed, legs crossed, and I wonder what she was doing, so I went out there to, uh, to talk to her. She says, I'm just meditating, and I'm not harming anything, I'm just meditating. And I said, uh, well, all right, uh, can, don't talk to me right now, I'm just meditating. I said, uh, well, you're just on our property, remember that now, you know. 
Well, then, uh, I don't know when it was, a week or two later, I saw her out there again. And she had something in a big box. And so I went out there and I met her again and started talking to her. She says, well, look, I want you to let me bury my dog on the edge of your property because once he's here, I can come out and meditate with him. I said, ma'am, <laughs> I think that's far enough. You're not going to bury your dog on our property here. And uh, you need to get with the word of God and see what you really need. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, not this meditation business. So she left, you know, and uh, but had an interesting talk with someone in this particular thing. Well, we got to hurry up. Theosophy, same type of thing. Uh, definitely going out today. Not so many people involved in that as used to be. Have you ever heard of uh, UFOs, worshiping UFOs? They have a group 10,000 strong in California. Wouldn't you know California? <laughs> that actually worship UFOs. They believe that people in the UFOs are a superior race, want to be worshipped, and they'll reveal themselves to them. They have regular times. Their, their meeting places are out in the open. They have regular times of meeting where they can watch for UFOs while they're talking and discussing things. So isn't that interesting? UFOs. Um, there's many other types of, uh, have you heard of uh, Armstrongism? It's about gone out today, but Herbert W. Armstrong and following him was Ted Garner Armstrong, but uh, they believe in what's called British Israelism, and that is that basically Great Britain and we would be from Great Britain too. All of us have replaced the Jews. There's no future for Israel at all. We have the ones that, that uh, replace them, and we are the ones in prophecy and all. So kind of interesting what he had to preach. If you listen to him sometimes on the radio, because he used to be on the radio here when I first came here. I, I'd listen once in a while, as you already say. What he usually said was pretty good. It could easily suck you in, you know, to listen to some of his... He'd use scriptures and things like that, but... He was off on, on the Jews. He was off on some things about Jesus Christ and just was not true at all to the word of God. But that's another one that did exist uh, in the past. I haven't heard much about them anymore. Um, Christadelphians, you ever heard of the Christadelphians? They're a branch of Unitarian Universalists. And uh, basically, you know, again, just there's God and and all the other teachings of the Bible, they don't really go by. Um, what else do I think I might mention to you here? Anybody heard any others around town? That There's a church universal and triumphant. <laughs> Okay. Well, a uh, man named Dan Larson has a book on the cults, and uh, he identifies in that book more than 1,000 in the United States. Some of them are very small, but just all kinds of beliefs like you wouldn't believe in the name of Christianity, but they're not Christian at all. <laughs> so very sad to see. All right, well, we better stop for tonight. Now, what I've decided to do is next week teach on baptismal regeneration. You know what that means? Either baptism saves you or baptism is a part of salvation. And there's a lot that teach that. The Roman Catholic Church teaches when you're baptized as a baby, it washes away your original sin. So baptism is part of your salvation. And so many other groups put big weight upon baptism. Oh, if you're not baptized as a baby, bad, bad, bad. If you're not sprinkled, you know, and all these churches, big problems, so... Uh, we need to study that. I want to look at the Bible verses because they try to get that out of some verses in the Bible. And they include Acts 2.38. Are you familiar with that verse? Uh, they try to use a couple of other verses in Acts. 
Uh, the sprinkling of babies, they try to justify by the fact that, for instance, whenever Paul and Silas preached to the Philippian jailer and he got saved, the Bible says he went home and all of the household was baptized that night. So see, there had to be little children there. They had to be baptized with the adults. But the Bible doesn't say that. It says he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ with all his house, which means what? It was people in his household that could believe. And that might have been back in that day and time servants and others that were with people too. So to try to justify babies being baptized with a verse like that is a mighty, mighty weak argument. But I think we need to spend one time on that. And then some have asked me about, what about Seventh-day Adventism? They're not considered by a, a cult by most because they do as far as the doctrines of Jesus Christ and things like that are, are correct on what they believe. But they do add the Old Testament law to New Testament things and so we'll just talk about them too and so you're familiar because you do run into them in town, people who are part of Seventh-day Adventism and they're a pretty large group in the world. They actually have more people a part of the Seventh-day Adventist movement in other countries than in the United States. So they're very large overall, millions of people involved with them. So we'll take a look at that, and then we'll finish up with this study. Any comment further or question tonight? Margaret? Yeah. All right, let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the tremendous grace and mercy of God. If it wasn't for that, we could be caught up in all these groups that teach these false things and be headed, Lord, to an eternity apart from you in hell. Lord, it's so sad to see how people are deceived and led astray by all these different cults. Lord, we just pray that your hand would be upon our people, that none of us would ever be led astray into groups like this. Keep us absolutely straight on the word of God. Help us to keep believing it for what it says, and certainly, Lord, these people that teach wrong things, if we run into them, try to give them the gospel as well, because the gospel, the Bible says, is the power of God to absolutely work on their hearts and lives. Thank you for this time together tonight. Bless us as we go in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you.